One day this elephant will be strong enough to push over the biggest of trees. But right now it just wants a little bit of shade. Isn't it gorgeous? So at this point, coordination is still a bit of an issue. Especially with the trunk. It's like learning toddlers learning to use their hands. Gripping, pushing, pulling, twisting. <laughs> yes, one day you'll be big enough to push over that tree. But maybe not just yet. Oh, it's a good scratching post though. You don't have hands to scratch the itch. I had an amazing sighting once with elephants and a, a calf of a similar age where I was watching... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's a good spot to scratch. That a very good spot to scratch, yes. I was watching them in a riverbed, and all of a sudden, it was one of those sort of overcast, nondescript days in the middle of summer. Not drizzling, not doing anything. And all of a sudden, the elephants sprinted, sprinted away from the middle of the riverbed where they were. And after that, it was followed by a crack of lightning and thunder, second to none. And somehow, the elephants had predicted that that was about to happen. Obviously they picked up on a build-up of electrical energy. Which brings us to Sandy's question, which is while we watch our elephant have a jolly good scratch on that Tamburti tree. Sandy's question about whether or not our elephant or our animals of different species will group or huddle together when there is an enorm enormous storm in the same way that cows and horses do in the States. Obviously Sandy, I'm sure you know we do get absolutely enormous storms out here. In fact, South Africa is famous for the thunderstorms that occur. And the animals don't necessarily huddle together with each other. The herds will stick closer together. But what you'll often find is that most of the prey species, the general, what we nickname the general game species, impala, zebra, buffalo, they'll end up huddled together not because they're looking for each other's comfort, but because of where they go. So that stormy weather for predators is a perfect place Oh, perfect hunting time for them. They will have their highest success rate on a stormy night. And the prey species know this. They know that their hearing, their sense of smell is comp compromised. So what they generally do is they go and they huddle in an open area. Like quarantine, for example. So whilst it's not looking for each other's company, they do end up in each other's company. And animals do get struck by lightning. A giraffe gets struck by lightning regularly. I once found it was like a crime scene. Ten dead impala underneath a tree that had been struck by lightning. That does occur. Elephants, I think, though, from what I saw, are quite good at predicting exactly where that lightning is going to strike. I think they've got a very, very, very refined sensory perception. This tree is just the best scratching post. And it gives us an opportunity to really, truly examine this little elephant up close and personally with her beautiful long eyelashes. <laughs> so I was wrong earlier in my assessment. This elephant must be a little bit older than six months old because she's eating solid food. Not much. <laughs> what are you doing? That's a tamburti tree. You can eat it but you probably don't want to. Have you got sore teeth maybe? Elephants do eat tree, do medicate toothache themselves, whether through feeding of tamburti trees or silver cluster leaf or spike thorn trees, all of which are very, very high tannin contents. They use it to medicate their toothache. Isn't that clever? Now at the moment, this little elephant, learning to use that, <laughs> is that branch providing some tricky, tricky maneuvering. <laughs> Almost. I love watching baby elephants learn to use their trunk. Yes, when in doubt, just pop it in your mouth. It'll be fine. <laughs> when the trunk isn't quite coordinated to strip off and pick off the leaves that the little baby elephant wants. Amber, an elephant's trunk 
speaking of this little one's coordination, is very, very powerful. So it's got between, it depends on, upon how you count it, but you've got between 50 to 100,000 muscles in an elephant's trunk. And it is completely unique in that the, the, the muscles run vertically, horizontally. It's got an, a concertina-like action to it. It can stretch right out or contract in and can twist pretty much in any direction. And then be strong enough to pull down enormous branches and gentle enough at the same time to pick up something as small as a toothpick or gently comfort a baby elephant. That trunk is the most amazing aspect of an elephant.